Welcome into the K0LWC Hamshack. Boy, do I have a video for you today. We are comparing the Motorola 7550E to the brand new successor to that radio, the Motorola R7. Which one is better for you? Which one should you choose if you had to go between the 7550 or the R7? That's what we're talking about. Let's get into it. Now, for those of you that know me personally, or maybe you follow me on Twitter or on Instagram, at K0LWC, by the way, know that I'm a huge DMR fanboy. I've been on DMR for a long time as a ham radio operator, uh, and I've pretty much used any tone radio equipment exclusively for my DMR mobiles and my DMR portables the last five or six years. Well, that's all changing as I dive into the Motorola world. So if you're wondering which one of these radios should I go with, Let's talk about what immediately jumps out to me about these two radios. Take a look at this. This was the first thing I noticed. The 7550 is a much thicker radio. It's very, very chunky compared to the R7. That's thanks to new lithium battery technology in the R7 that allows for a much slimmer and ergonomically designed battery pack. Would you believe that these two battery packs, looking at the size difference, there's only a 50 milliamp hour difference between the two of them? Yes, uh, the battery pack, they're not compatible between the two, which is not at all surprising because the 7550 ends up just being really chunky. And that's the second thing. This radio in the hand, the 7550, feels like a solid brick, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It really doesn't have a good hand feel. It's not comfortable to operate. And I have really big hands. Uh, and this radio still, for me, is not the most comfortable to use. Now, Compare and contrast that to the R7, we're talking about a whole different story. This radio has a great hand feel. And the biggest difference I think they made in this uh, radio is they redesigned this accessory port. This is where you're going to hook up your external microphone or your programming cables. They actually redesigned it to be more uh, waterproof and dustproof. And in addition to that, they made it not so obtrusive here on the right side of the radio. Just look at the difference in these accessory ports. Uh, I mean, this 7550 sticks out a ton and it really affects the way the radio feels in your hand. Uh, it makes it kind of uncomfortable to use over the long term. So ergonomically, the R7 is a major leap forward between these two radios. And next we have to talk about the keypad. Now, of course, don't forget, these radios are really engineered and designed for commercial users in mind. So let's take a first look here at the 7550. This keypad is pretty small buttons fairly flush against the radio, kind of tough to use. Even when I don't have anything on my hands, like gloves, they're you know not the best keypad buttons to use. Now, take a look at what they've done on the R7. They are much more uh, large in size. They stand off the radio a good bit. They have a great tactile feel. And when you push them, there's a great, great tactile feel in the push. Um, they feel much more rugged, much more easy to use, especially if you're a commercial user or a ham, that it's going to be having gloves on a lot. Like if you live in a cold place like, oh, I don't know, Minnesota in the wintertime, um, these are going to be much better to use uh, on the radio compared to the 7550. Now we have to go to the top of the radio. There have been changes up here. When we take a look at either radio side by side, what do you notice? The emergency button on the top of the radio here on the R7 has been made larger. A lot easier to use and press on the top of the radio. Now for me, I use it between my high power and low power setting. Uh, you can see just how much smaller it is here on the 7550. Um, so that has been redesigned. Also, the lights here on the 7550, um, you'll notice there's really not a lot of front visibility to this light. It's more viewed as a top down type of activity light here. Um, it's not really well seen this way. Not the case here on the R7. The R7 now is front facing as well as top facing. So no matter whether you're looking down or setting it on a desk and looking at it straight on, you're going to be able to easily see that activity light on the R7. The next thing that was immediately apparent was the UI. Now, uh, there's actually a beautiful, beautiful screen, of course, here on the R7 that really lacks on the uh, 7550. The 7550 screen is not very impressive, but that's because this is a brand new 2.4 inch 320 by 240 display, and it's made with Gorilla Glass. If you don't know what Gorilla Glass is, that's actually the same glass they put on smartphones like the iPhone. Uh, this is incredibly resistant to drops and scratching. Um, so if you're worried about shattering the screen, 
you can still get a screen protector, but just know, I mean, this is a rugged piece of glass on this radio. Uh, and what it allows for is with a beautiful screen like this, when you get a text message that comes in, it will actually appear here on the bottom half of the screen. What that means is an improved user experience. You don't have to dig a few clicks into the radio menu to go in and go to your inbox and read the message. It just appears here. You click down once, you click OK, and boom, you're in the message. So that's an example of how they've really taken advantage of this beautiful new screen and made it a lot more functional for the end user. But this one, folks, this this is the Grand Pooba. This is the biggest standout feature that this radio has. It's just amazing. So I'm going to take off the, uh, the belt clip here on the back of the R7 for you because it's going to allow you to see what's going on. Take a look at the back of the 7550 first. We see it has a little logo back here, XPR 7550E. You don't really see anything else, do you? Nothing else sticking out? Nothing else jumps out to you? Okay, well, let's look at the R7. You know what this little guy is? Yes, that is a second microphone. The big, big improvement of this radio, it's all about audio quality, is the fact that it has adaptive noise cancellation. That means a lot of things in this radio. They actually brought this technology uh, over from the APX line that is used in public safety. So this is constantly sampling background noise, much like your top of the line Bose or Sony headphones that have noise cancellation in them. Uh, and it's constantly adjusting and trying to take out that background noise. Not only that, it will also sample background noise and adjust the volume of your radio if you enable the feature. Um, so that way, no matter where you're at, the volume of the radio will be at an appropriate level where you can hear it depending on background noise. So this is the background noise microphone, and this is the primary microphone on the radio up front. So this thing basically will cancel out just about any noise you can imagine, including other radios around you. So let's say you're standing in a group talking with friends, and all of a sudden you have to answer a radio call or someone calls you on a local repeater. You can actually key up, talk, even if you get feedback from friends that are standing next to you, that adaptive microphone in the back will cancel it out and they will just get your voice. Now, I've done some testing with this and let me tell you, I'll have a video coming out soon that showcases this. The noise cancellation on this radio is nothing short of phenomenal. You can be in an incredibly noisy environment. I'm talking, you know, what it's designed for, a major factory, a major sports arena, an airport runway, and be standing next to incredibly noisy things. And this radio on DMR, you wouldn't even know the difference. Nobody would even know you're standing next to a running jet engine. It's just absolutely incredible. So that is one of the biggest things that they've improved over the 7550E here is the audio. Not only that, they have a new way of doing a high profile speaker. What that means is it goes up to 107 dB fawn of loudness. Um, if you want to on the R7. That is incredibly loud, folks. Uh, it is way louder than the 7550E. So if you're someone that really needs to have a very loud radio, but it's not just loud. Let me be clear here on that too. It's not like they just cranked up the gain and that was it. It's loud, but it's still intelligible and crystal clear. And that's the beauty of Motorola engineering at work right there. Um, so if you're in a loud environment where you need to use your radio on DMR, this is a clear winner because that is where the majority of the feature enhancements really are in the R7. And how can we be talking about Motorola without talking about ruggedness? Now, the 7550E is a tank in its own right, but the R7 takes it up another notch in what it can do. It is built to military standards. What that means is it's intrinsically safe. So if you're in a hazardous environment, if you're using it in a commercial setting, Totally great for that, but also it's IP68 and IP66 rated. That means it is completely dust tight and protected from water up to two meters for two hours and direct impact from high pressure water streams. This thing is gonna take a licking and keep on ticking. In fact, even this glass is rated to take multiple drops on concrete uh, and not shatter. So again, this thing is not going to fall and break. Uh, and again, given the price point, it shouldn't, right? Uh, this thing is built to commercial standard, military standard. Uh, so if you're worried about what you're going to throw at it from a ham radio aspect, unless you're really hard on your radios, which I'm talking really hard, you have nothing to worry about. So would I recommend the R7 over the 7550 having done both? The answer is yes. 
I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. Because the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, Motorola is coming out with this R7. They will likely discontinue the 7550E here in the next one to one and a half years. And when that happens, R7 is going to be the premier Moto Turbo DMR radio for Motorola for you know, three, four, five, six, seven years, who knows how long the runtime will be, but they're going to start producing and developing on the R7 platform. So if you're talking about longevity of your investment, whether it's accessories, other features uh, in CPS 2.0, uh, Motorola R7 is going to be where it's at. So if you're looking at it as a long-term investment, there's a clear choice there. It's an R7. But I think even if you're just comparing these two, I would probably still go with the R7 if you can swing the few extra hundred dollars. The 7550E, phenomenal radio. Um, it's great audio if you're in a quiet setting in your ham shack. Between the two, you're not gonna notice much difference. But when you're put into challenging situations, uh, the Motorola R7 is going to shine above and beyond the 7550E. Um, I just find it more of a pleasure to operate. I think it's designed well for the end user. I like the fact that text messages display right here on the bottom of the radio compared to what happens here on the 7550 where they're not and it takes multiple more clicks. I like the keypad more. I like the emergency button and the more space here on the top of the radio on the R7. Again, I think it's just overall a better designed radio and that absolute phenomenal noise cancellation technology in this radio just is the killer feature for me. So if you're considering, is it worth a couple extra hundred bucks? Uh, I would say yes. Does that mean the 7550E is a bad radio? Absolutely not. It's a great radio. It's just going to be heavier. It's going to be thicker. You're not going to have the noise cancellation technology and noise suppression. Um, it's going to be a little bit more clunky on the screen, lower resolution screen, smaller screen. The keypad is not as functional, especially with gloves on. So again, there's differences, but that's why it's an upgrade. I think Motorola, you can tell, took the time, engineered it well, thought it out, um, didn't rush it out. It's a great radio. I think this is going to be a phenomenal upgrade for commercial users um, and ham radio users that have certain specific needs in their DMR radio. I think this is definitely a worthwhile upgrade. If you just want to use something around your shack um, and don't mind the cons that come with it, the 7550E is still a great radio. But if you can swing it, I think the R7 is worth getting. If you have any questions, drop me a comment down below. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, shoot me a DM on Twitter or on Instagram if that's your preference. Uh, I will definitely try to help you with any question uh, that you may have. Thanks again for watching. Uh, appreciate it. I'll catch you again next time.